see you there. Easter 2024 is going to be big at Newburgh. We're bringing the city together. Join us on Good Friday night, March 29th, 7.30 p.m. As Newburgh and World Changers unite for a monumental celebration with special guest Dr. Creflo Dollar. Now, I am not enough, but Jesus is, and I've got to have Jesus, and in him I am more than enough. Dr. Jamal Bryant and the electrifying New Birth Worship team will lead us in a powerful service you won't forget. And the celebration won't stop there. Resurrection Sunday, March 31st, will feature a soul-stirring worship led by Todd Delaney. Followed by a moving Easter message from Dr. Bryant. But when you get to the place where you're empty, God will say, let me fill you. It's a weekend of worship, praise, and community as Atlanta comes together to celebrate our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Easter weekend at New Birth. Don't miss it. Join New Birth this Resurrection Weekend for Easter Dinner on Us. We're blessing 2,000 families with fresh produce, chicken, and snacks in a drive through distribution. Come on Saturday, March 30th at 10 a.m. and be a part of the joy. First come, first served, while supplies last. Want to help out? Sign up to volunteer at newbirth.org. Let's share the Easter spirit together. After service in the lobby, we are hosting our life-enhancing community health fair. Gain knowledge, receive screenings for diabetes, heart disease, and more from health professionals. Participate in vital health discussions and get screened. Step up to volunteer for this empowering event and contribute to a healthier, informed community. Your well-being matters. Our year of answered prayer fast is happening every Tuesday all year. That's right. We're fasting from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. all year long. Click the QR code on the back of your chair for more information or visit newbirth.org slash events. Thank you, everyone, for your participation in our corporate 40-day financial fast. Let's finish strong. The fast ends on Thursday, March 28th. We're believing God for amazing testimonies. Please email your stories to testimonies at newbirth.org. Attention entrepreneurs and business owners, connect and thrive at New Birth's First Friday Networking Mixer. Join Dr. Bryant on April 5th from 6 to 8 p.m. at the new Black Wall Street. Swap ideas, grow your network, and enjoy light refreshments. This event has free entry. Bring your business cards and an open mind. See you there for networking success. New Birth Family, as we embark on our Show Me a Sign Capital campaign, we embrace a season of divine revelation. It's time to enhance the beauty of the signs around the exterior of our campus for the first time in over two decades, reflecting our inner transformation. We invite you to join us in sowing seeds that beautify our church grounds and in return, seek God's direction in your life for the upcoming quarter. With giving tiers from $100 to $5,000, we ask that you pray for guidance on your contribution level. Let's unite on April 21st to raise $250,000, honoring the land entrusted to us by the Lord. Together as we give, we anticipate the signs and wonders God will reveal in our midst. What's up, family? I am Broderick McBride, the Director for Emerging Generations here at New Birth Cathedral. Parents, I have some exciting news for you. Catapult Summer Academy 2024 is underway. If you have a child between the ages of 5 and 12 years of age and you are looking to find them something to do this summer, this is the summer experience you want to sign them up for. Parents, go over to our website now. Fill out the interest form and we will be following up with you first regarding our application process. We want to see you there. Take care. If it's your first time here, welcome. We hope you enjoy this service. If you need anything, ask any of our ministry workers and they'll point you in the right direction. At the end of service, you'll have an opportunity to connect further with us, whether by making Jesus the Lord of your life or becoming a member at New Birth. Remember, here at New Birth, our vision is simple. Equip, Equip empower, empower, engage. engage. See you next week.
everyone to our Palm Sunday experience. If you are online watching, please tag, share, and comment in this experience. Hallelujah. Can we go before the throne of grace? Hallelujah. Let us pray. God, we thank you. God, we glorify you. We magnify you this morning. God, we thank you for yet another day. God, we thank you that last night was not our last night, but God, that you saw fit to rise us this morning, that we may enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. God, wonderful, excellent, holy is your name. Mighty is your name. For you are our strong tower that we can run into and be saved and safe from the plan of the enemy. Oh, God today we thank you and we give you glory for today we commemorate the day that you came in the form of our Savior you came in the form of flesh and you thought it not robbery to enter into Jerusalem riding on that mule so that we your people could cry out Hosanna in the highest you be lifted up you be magnified you be glorified for you are Lord of Lords you are King of kings, the great I am, our redeemer, our chief cornerstone in which the builders rejected and today we thank you and we glorify you for you Lord despised and rejected, a man of sorrow, acquainted with grief, surely you have borne our sorrows, surely you have carried our grief and we say thank you, yet we esteem you, smitten and stricken, uh, afflicted, uh, but bruised for our transgressions, uh, wounded by our iniquities, uh, chastisement of our peace was upon you, and with every stripe, uh, we are healed, uh, we are saved, uh, thus said the Lord our God, uh, God, they whispered into my ear, uh, they said cover the asthma patients, uh, so right now in the name of Jesus, uh, we dismantle uh, the attack and the assignment uh, of the enemy, uh, seeking to devour seeking to devour our respiratory system seeking to devour our lungs seeking to devour our nostrils we say say that the Lord rebuke you the Lord rebuke you the Lord rebuke you the Lord rebuke you we are healed by the womb in his side in the mighty name of Josiah in the name of Jesus we pray shout hallelujah Somebody shout hallelujah. Palm Sunday, it's the day that commemorates when Jesus was entering into Jerusalem. And the Bible says that the people, they had palms, they had branches, and they laid it on the ground. And they also laid their cloaks on the, on the ground, and they shouted, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. I need everybody to make sure that you have a palm in your hand. Make sure everybody got their palm in their hand. If you don't, make sure you get one from the usher. We're about to celebrate, but just before we celebrate, this is our moment to spread the love of Jesus Christ. Just like they invited him in, we invite him into this building and into our hearts. But I want you to invite somebody to worship with you that's standing next to you. Can you just take a moment and pass the peace, everybody? Come on, spread the love of Jesus Christ all in the building. Come on, let's spread his love. Hosanna!
Come on, tell him he's worthy. Come on, tell him he's worthy. Oh, yes, we love you. Oh, yes, we bless you. Oh, yes. So says, Worthy am that was slain, crucified our dead was paid. Son of God, Emmanuel, we praise your name, we praise your name, help me sing, Word. that was slain, that was slain. he was crucified. crucified, and he paid our debts, yeah. son of God. Is Emmanuel, he's got with us, and that's why we praise his name. We praise. Come on, sing Hosanna. Blessed be the rock. Come on, wave your hand and tell him, Blessed be the rock. Sing Hosanna.
forever all we need say and all we want is in you Lord Jesus come on lift it up sing Hosanna blessed be the rock blessed be Say it. Praise him. Let the church take it. Church, y'all take it and say his presence is here. 
He's healing bodies right now, yeah. His presence is here. Hosanna in the high. Let's say a church. Let our King deliver. Raise it volume. Come on. Can we say it as a family? Come on, let's raise it. Say it. Say it. Let. Say it. Hey, still he speaks from eternity. I came to have a little church today. Did anybody come and die? If I be lifted up from the earth, I I just need some real sanctified people to help me say it. Lift him up. Hey, come on, let's lift him up. Lift him up. Come on, church, say it. Still he speaks from eternity. Throw your hands in the hair. How do you need a blessing? Say it. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw. Oh, I don't know if we've ever sung this song, but there you go, catch it. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Say it. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Somebody say his name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Raise the church. Say it. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. They say something happens when you call on the name of Jesus. I believe in the next one minute that the power of God is going to drop in here like never before. I need everybody to raise your voice and say it. Jesus, Jesus. Come on, raise your praise head. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, let's call his name this morning. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That thing just dropped in my spirit, say it. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Healer, healer, healer. Say it, hey. Healer, healer, healer. I can't hear your church raising. Healer, healer, healer. Does anybody need him to heal you today? Healer, healer, healer. Come on, everybody say healer. Save you, save you, save you, save you. He came to save somebody today. That's it, raise your worship. Glory to God. Jesus. 
There is something Hallelujah About That name Can you lift your hands and your voice Say master say it Master Say it real big Like the fragrance, like the fragrance after, after hey, the rain. Let's say his name real big in the building. Say it, Jesus. Say it, saints. Jesus. Raise it real big, Jesus. Let all heaven, let all heaven. Would you lift up your voice and just worship him for just one moment? Come on, cry out unto him. I wish somebody loved him today. I wish somebody would speak of well of him today. Palm Sunday is so critical. I need you to hear this. Palm Sunday is so critical because it is the only day that Jesus was treated at the level he deserved. It is on Palm Sunday that Jesus did not have the pressure to perform. He didn't preach on this day. He didn't teach on this day. He didn't heal on this day. They shouted just because they were elated to be in his presence. I wonder if we can just uh, imagine you having one day of being treated at the level you deserve. Come on, I can't hear anybody that nobody is asking anything of you. But you just have uh, the ability to just be yourself. Uh, for one moment, I want us to engage in a high level of worship with no strings attached. I know that you're dealing with asthma and health issues and concerns, and we'll deal with that later on in the service. Uh, but I want us to just bask in the splendor of his glory, uh, knowing he didn't have to let us live, but he did. And I'm glad just to have him in my space. I'm glad to have him in my life. Would you lift up that hand and open up your mouth? Those of you who are online, I want you to just worship him right there. Come on, come on. Open up your mouth. I want you to give him glory. Come on, I dare you to give him glory. I dare you to give him honor. I dare you to give him thanksgiving. Come on, open up your mouth. I need you to punctuate it. He's deserving to more than that. Come on, turn it up just a little bit. Can you imagine an entire day without anybody asking you for anything? Can you imagine just one day of there being no demands on you? All you got to do is just show up. That's what today is. Come on, I want you to give him glory. God, all year you've been blessing me. All year you've been making a way. All year you've been putting food on the table. All year. You done put a shelter over my head. Oh, yeah. You've been fighting for my family. Oh, yeah. You've been standing in the gap. But today, I just want to say thank you. Today, I just want to lift you up. Today, I just want to glorify you. Today, you've been better to me than I've been to myself. Hallelujah. With that hand lifted. You are Alpha and all. We worship you are. For you are. You 
Let's start over from the beginning. Everybody lift up that hand. Come on, open up your mouth, even online. You are. Oh my God. And oh. For you are Come on, we give. I feel his presence in this room. Lifted. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody. Hallelujah. I feel this glory today. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. One more time, hallelujah, hallelujah, we thy praise to you, hallelujah, the glory belongs to you, we say, hallelujah, come on, hallelujah. For thine is the kingdom and the power and that hand lifted. Let me just hear the sound of worshipers right here. Come on. Open up your mouth. Come on. Give him glory. Give him honor. Give him praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his holy name. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, our God is worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Something good is going to happen to you today. I said something good is going to happen to you today. I want you right where you are. Would you just move from where you are? I want you to embrace three people around you. Tell them the glory of God is on you. The glory of God is on you. The glory of God is on you. The presence of God is on you. The power of God is on you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you feel his power in the room today, would you clap your hands even now? For thy. Come on, new birth, lean into it. And. Come on, for thine, hey, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for thine is the kingdom and the power and the power and 
the glory. Open your Bibles and join me in Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. Thank you, music ministry, for leading us in worship today. Thank you, musicians. I'm grateful for you. I'm thankful for the presence of the Holy Spirit that is in this place today. Would you give God a shout of thanksgiving for those who are worshiping online from around the world? We're grateful for them. Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. And Mark chapter 11 asks that uh, every person who's physically able to do so, would you stand in reverence to the word of God? Mark chapter 11. Mark 11 verses 7 through 9. Mark 11 verses 7 through 9. I want us to read it together with uplifted voices. Come on, everybody. When they brought the cult to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road while others spread branches they had cut in the field. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna. Amen. When they brought the cult to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road while others spread branches they cut in the field. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of our God. I want to preach for a little while this morning using as a subject, it's going to be hard to cut this off. It's going to be hard to cut this off. Would you look at the person beside you and tell them, I'm going to need you to pray for me today. It's going to be hard for me to cut this off. Comrades, recently I was made privy to an interview with the philosopher Emanuela Cosia, who penned the book, The Roots of the World. He has an intriguing theory that suggests um, that it's based off of theology and not ecology in terms of the pecking order of human nature. He argues that out of our theology, not out of ecology, humans are at the top. Animals are in the middle and plants are at the bottom. He said, based off of our theology, we put humans at the top, animals in the middle, and plants at the bottom. However, we must note Genesis chapter 1. And in Genesis chapter 1, verse number 11, the first thing God created was plants and trees. And he does this right after sunlight and water. So before animals, before humankind, he creates plants and trees. It's not long thereafter that he hewns out Adam and Eve. And they are told that they have free reign over the garden. They're told that they have free reign over the garden and are giving one admonition. And that is do not partake of the fruit of the forbidden tree. This exact wisdom should, should probably be issued to the enemies of our souls. That they can bother anything except for the fruit of our wombs. 
our children should be off limits. The very first Psalm, Psalm 1, verse 3 through 6. Psalm 1, verse 3 through 6. How we are um, invited to be like a tree planted by the streams of water that brings up forth fruit in its season. I need somebody to shout out loud, it's my season. It's your season to produce. It's your season to be fruitful. It is your season to see the fruit of your effort. It says, be like a tree planted by the streams of water that brings forth fruit in its season. We are never told to be like other humans. We are told to be like trees. Joanne Raptus, a poet, uh, wrote a poem entitled, Be Like a Tree. And in that poem, Be Like a Tree, she says, in being like a tree, stay grounded. Connect with your roots. Turn over a new leaf. Bend, but don't break. Enjoy your unique beauty, and whatever you do, keep growing. I need somebody to hear that again. Be like a tree. You're going to have to stay grounded. Don't you get puffed up on your ego and your ambition and your accomplishments. Stay connected with your roots. You didn't just arrive here by yourself. Turn over a new leaf. I know real life becomes rough and daunting and it becomes harrowing at times, but you got to bend and not break. You have to know that I am great because I am unique and in spite of everything that I've been through don't judge me too quick why because I'm still growing is that anybody's testimony I know I haven't checked off all of the boxes but be patient with me I'm still growing Peter Wallen when I wrote a book called the hidden life of trees the hidden life of trees and he asserts that every life form in the earth has the ability to feel pain. It has the ability to feel pain so that it knows how to respond appropriately. Like animals, like humans, plants produce substances that suppress pain. If they had no sensation, then it would be unnecessary. The thought of uh, torture and pain being inflicted on plants only came to mind because I was reading Mark 11. And Jesus told the disciples to go find a colt. He tells them this in verse number eight. He says, go find a colt and bring the colt to me. He never told them to cut down branches. He said, just bring a coat. Let me ride on top of it. And the people decided on their own. It was never a direction from God to cut down branches. Isn't it amazing that in all your life growing up in church, for 2,000 years in the study of theology and biblical study, that nobody has ever paused to ask the probing in a rock. How, how did the trees feel on Palm Sunday? Nobody ever gave it any never mind. And part of the reason why nobody ever gave critical analysis on how the trees felt on Palm Sunday is because people presume that trees don't have feelings. Some of the branches from those palm trees, you're not going to believe it, new birth, some of the branches, branches from those palm trees were hacked off with machetes. And here it is, they were hacked off and the people who did it had the mind they were doing it for God when God never asked them to do it. 
There have been people who have been wielding weapons to cut you at your knees, to make you small enough to be their size. So they use language and insults to think that they can chop you in half and they think they're doing it because they're spiritual. Uh, Y'all ain't saying nothing. God ain't never armed you with what you need in order to be upset with me about the length of my skirt or what color is my lipstick or how long is my fingernails. You are armed as your own deputy hurting people in the name of God when God never gave you that authority. He said take up your own cross. He never said put a cross on other people. They use machetes to cut down the branches. And I came to bear witness to somebody in this room. No weapon that is formed against you will be able to prosper. I can tell y'all ain't shouting because you ain't had folk who conspired to wound you and to break you. But no matter what they tried, God put a hedge fence of protection. There were some that used machetes and others climbed atop of the trees and broke it off with their bare hands. I am here to announce to you under the authority of heaven that not a hand will be laid on you. I better go a step further. Not a hand will be laid on your children. Why? Because touch not my anointed and do my servant no harm. Now this time, here you are flailing these branches around. Some of you raised old school, got uh, palms tied up on your rear view mirror. <laughs> you got palms uh, in the middle of your Bible. Some of you got palms on the back seat of your chair. And you never thought about the tree that it came from. Never thought about what it took for you to get that palm that you're dealing with so casually and so leisurely. And I sense that some of you can identify not with the palm, but you can identify with the palm tree. Because regrettably in your adult life, nobody has ever paused to consider your feelings. They don't know how deep the cut is to have your confidentiality betrayed. They don't know how the knife is twisted to lay in the bed beside somebody who was unfaithful. They can't see the internal bleeding to have a, a sibling that's a sociopath. They don't know the gash that was left by a narcissist who was gifted at breaking your self-esteem just so that they can feel better about themselves. They don't know what it feels like to be berated and have all of your identity in shambles by the people who raised you. How they don't know what it's like to have been assaulted and because you have been assaulted, you are suspicious of people who actually mean well for you. They don't know that being repeatedly lied to has lowered your expectation of truth. They, they got no idea your head hurts because you overthink even while you're sleeping. Your heart hurts because you love too hard from people who don't value it. Your body hurts because you can't even rest even while you are sleeping. Your back hurts because you got to pull all of the knives out of it from the people that you let close and somehow or another folk don't understand it should be blood coming from your clothes from how bad you've been wounded but you refuse to feel bad for yourself you just get up every day and say this joy that I have the world didn't give it They use machetes to break the branches. They climbed and used their hand and break the branches. 
And the reason why they didn't pause to ask how the tree was feeling is because that tree is like many of you. In spite of what was broken off of you, in spite of the pain that you endured, in spite of what you have lost, in spite of what have taken from you, do you know why the devil can't stand you? In spite of all of that pain, you still stand it. After all that I've been through, I dare you to push somebody and tell them I'm standing, I'm standing. You don't know what I've been through, but I'm still standing. I, I should have lost my mind, but I'm still standing. Hallelujah. Oh my God. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah came through a broken home, survived a divorce, had to downsize my lifestyle, had a fight with cancer, had to file bankruptcy. I lost a whole lot of stuff, but I need somebody to shout out loud, I'm still standing. Hallelujah. You may be seated. And that has been the liability of your strength. I need you to hear me very well. The liability of your strength is because you are still standing. People think it hasn't had an impact. God, I can't hear nobody in here. They don't understand I'm standing, but I'm holding myself together. God, I can't hear nobody. I'm standing, but for real, for real, God, if one more thing happened to me, I'm going to crumble right here. I'm standing, but my teeth are grinding. I'm standing, and my fist is clenched. I'm standing, but I can't stand people. I'm standing. According. According to the Association of Medical Colleges, they released a study in 2020, and I need you to hear this. While we're having a, a health fair today, I want you to be mindful of this study that came out in 2020 from the Association of American Medical Colleges that 40%, I need you to hear this, 40% of medical students, this is 2020, not 1952, not 1968, not 1989, 2020. 40% of medical students believe that black people's skin is thicker than white people's. They believe that our blood coagulates quicker. They believe that we have less sensitive nerve index. And so as a consequence, white doctors, I need you to hear this, white doctors are 22% less likely to give black people pain medication. Hallelujah, because they think that we can just take it. So we have been systematically conditioned to cope with pain and to self-medicate. I can't hear nobody. So some of the people in your family, you've been judging them prematurely. They are drinking not out of a discipline, but because they're trying to deal with the pain that they're going through. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You got children who won't get out of the bed, who are dealing with depression, and you got no idea that they got some deep and abiding pain that's going on in their life but I came for 500 of y'all who are dealing with pain in your body I came to remind you that God is a healer and I, I know some of y'all ain't never lived through any painful experiences but you ought to give yourself a break and give yourself extra credit that with the pain that you are going through that you are not high right now you ain't drunk right now you ain't under the bridge right now that you ain't shot nobody by now but God has helped you to manage your pain hallelujah you see that please I, I just need you to get your role on alert for what's getting ready to happen I, I need to get your role on alert for what's getting ready to happen. Would you just tell the people on your role, I'm in pain, but I'm managing. 
Hallelujah. I'm in pain, but I'm keeping it together. Hallelujah. And some of this ain't even fresh wounds. I've been dealing with this pain for years. And folk got no idea what my relationship with God is like. Because I've been having to deal with it and I didn't want to inconvenience other folk. So even the people that are close to me don't even know what's nagging at me. But I stay up at night in my bed looking at the ceiling. Sometimes I sit in the car before I go into the office. Other days I eat and I'm not even hungry because I'm trying to manage. trying to manage it and I don't want you to get it twisted I don't want you confused I don't want you to not be able to connect the dots I am not talking about trees I'm talking about you it's, it's going to be hard to cut some stuff off. Hallelujah. But God says, I'm able to do it. Hallelujah. You, you just got to be prepared. Hallelujah. For what I'm getting ready to do. Hallelujah. It may hurt a little bit. But you're going to feel better after the process is over. I feel like somebody getting ready to get a breakthrough right through here. I need you to just grab somebody by the hand and tell them, brace yourself. Because God is getting ready to break some stuff off of you. you. You didn't even know why you were coming to church today. But this is outpatient surgery. Before you get back to your car, everything illegally attached to your body is getting ready to come off of you. Because God has got to tear it off. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. You, you may be seated. Please, I'm, I'm coming in just one minute. Hallelujah. He's getting ready to break it off for you. I know you don't know that neighbor like that. I, I know for some of you, you just met them. Uh, but I need you to indulge me for just one moment. It won't even be long. I, I, I need you to just clasp that neighbor's hand real quick because uh, something getting ready to be broken off of them. Hallelujah. And they just need you for moral support. I, I ain't even getting ready to pray. I, I just need you to hold them so they don't run too far. Uh, God said, you don't even know what I'm getting ready to break in the realms of the spirit. Because usually it takes seven years to get it done. But I'm getting ready to do something for the person whose hand you're holding. That it ain't going to take seven years. I'm going to do it in the next seven weeks. He said, watch this. I don't know where my screamers are. He said, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to break some stuff off your credit report. I'm tearing off every bankruptcy, every foreclosure, every repossession, every law judgment, every loan default, every student law, everything your account told you years to do. God said, if you give me glory, watch what I do before April is over. I got the power to break it off. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Holy God. Hey. Thank you, Holy God. I feel glory coming here. Hey, hey, hey. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy God. I just need five of y'all to shout, it's off me. It's off me. Hallelujah. It ain't nothing illegal attached to my name. It's off me. Whatever was blocking me from stepping into my next assignment is off of me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be seated, please. Hallelujah. Be seated. Take that neighbor by the hand. I'm getting ready to break something off of them. Hallelujah. I said, I'm getting ready to break something off of them. Thank you, Holy God. I'm getting ready to break something off of them. Hallelujah. The first time they used a weapon, the second time they used it by hand. If two or three 
are touching and agreeing, there will I be also. I need you to pull on that neighbor till they can't sit still. God said, before the benediction, I'm breaking illegal spirits off of you. God, I can't hear nobody. I break the spirit of procrastination. I break every porn addiction. I break nail biting, excessive snacking, oversleeping, y'all ain't saying nothing, and addiction to social media and Instagram and TikTok. God said, I'm breaking it off for you. Thank you. You may be seated. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Holy God. Hallelujah. You may be seated. I got to show you something. Hallelujah. He breaking stuff off credit reports. Hallelujah. Breaking stuff that has aligned and connected itself to your spirit. But I need you to hold that neighbor's hand for the last time today. Hallelujah. I promise you. Well, let me not promise you. I'm going to try to promise you uh, that this is your last time today. And if 70 of y'all don't shout something wrong with you, he said it's going to be hard to break it off. But only the Holy Ghost can do this. Hallelujah. I can't hear nobody. God said when you give me glory today, I am breaking every illegal soul tie that whoever is in your spirit that I have not ordained I'm getting them out of your heart I can't hear nobody I'm getting them out of your mind I'm getting them here's your shout I'm getting them out of your bed I'm getting them out of your phone I gotta break everything hallelujah you may be seated hallelujah Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am free. Praise the Lord. I'm free. No longer bound. It's just... Come on, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. Ooh. Hallelujah. You may be seated. So Jesus starts riding through Jerusalem. And people start coming out of their jobs, coming out of their house. And they start crying out, Hosanna. Blessed be the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Accountants start praising them. Bankers start praising them. Priests start praising them. Public school teachers start praising them. And nobody asked, what was the palm tree doing? God, I can't hear nobody. The palm trees had to give the greatest praise of everybody who's in Jerusalem that day. Watch this, because they're the only ones who's praising them who ain't got nothing. Oh my God. It's easy to praise God when you live in a comfortable life. It's easy to praise God when you got money in the bank. But when you've been stripped down to nothing, and you still got a praise on the inside. The devil will say, now that's a real one over there. Those of y'all that got everything, don't shout with us. But if over the last three years, you didn't had stuff stripped off of you, but you still got a shout on the inside, would you give God glory like you know God is hate? Hallelujah. Oh. Oh. Says, oh. be seated, please. Um, they um, they praised him with nothing. Hallelujah. 
I said they praised him with nothing. Some of y'all ain't never been there, but I, I just need five of y'all. Come on. I need you to have a flashback of when the devil thought he took everything from you. But your broke grandmother said, I woke up this morning with my mind. Stay on G. Hallelujah. 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 Y'all still ain't saying the right thing yet. If you were ever stripped down to nothing, but you still had a praise on the inside, would somebody just shout Hosanna? He's still worthy of the highest praise. I don't know how I'm going to pay this bill, but he's still worthy of the highest praise. I don't know how I'm going to meet the note, but he's still worthy. And uh, this is the last time I ask you to be seated. It's the last time I'll ask you to be seated. Last time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got um, I, I got good news on behalf of the Department of Dendrology, which is, uh, dendrology is the study of trees. And here's uh, what the Department of Dendrology wanted me to tell you is, uh, don't feel bad for the palm tree. Yeah, that's, that's what they wanted me to tell you. Don't feel bad for the palm tree uh, because the palm tree has a benefit that sycamore trees don't have that elm trees don't have, that fir trees do not have. And here's uh, why uh, the palm tree wasn't even tripping about what happened to them. Uh, because for other trees, uh, it takes years to grow back. God help me. Hallelujah. But for a palm tree, it only takes six weeks. Oh, I think I lost you. I think I lost you. I think I lost you. It, it takes six weeks for the branches to grow back on palm trees. Jonathan, only me and you going to be able to get this. And so they knew that whatever they lost, y'all ain't going to get it. Whatever they lost, hallelujah, whatever they lost, they would have by Pentecost. God, I can't hear nobody. You want to know why I'm shouting today? Whatever the devil stole from me by Pentecost Sunday, it's going to be pressed down, shaking together, and running over. Are oh, y'all getting ready to kill a demon today? I don't want you to shout over what you lost. I want you to shout for what's growing back. Come on, I can't hear nobody. If you think you ain't going to get it, don't give God glory. But if you believe in the next six weeks, everything. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Holy God. I just need somebody to shout out loud. It's growing back. It's... He, here's, here's the thing that the palm tree knew uh, that I needed you to know is that those who chopped down its branches I didn't know they were doing the palm tree a favor God I can't hear nobody because when the branches grow back it doesn't grow back the way that it was before God help me it grows back stronger Come on, Marvin said, I never would have made it, but I'm stronger now. Is there anybody here stronger than you were before the pandemic that you understand his grace? His grace and his mercy. 
And so you got to figure out, uh, ladies and gentlemen, how uh, was it able to withstand the pressure of people climbing up on it, chopping off its branches, and nobody ever checking to see how they were doing. Hallelujah. You don't even understand, hallelujah, how you have developed self-reliance. That you've been through some stuff without the benefit of support. God, folk don't even understand. I'm my own life coach. I'm my own therapist. I can't hear nobody. I got to talk myself out of depression. I, I talk myself out of anxiety attack. But the secret weapon of the palm branch is that its roots go down so far. Watch this, that it connects with another tree. Hallelujah, that the enemy can't see that they're connected. Because it's happening underground. The enemy don't, th don't understand, I ain't in this by myself. I'm connected to some other praises. And the only way they can lift me up is if they've been stripped themselves. Would you look at your neighbor and say, I know it's been hard for you to cut some stuff off. But that's why I pledge to be next to you today. That when I give God glory, I'm not shouting for me, but I'm shouting that everything you lost is about to grow back for you. I don't want you to shout for yourself, but would you shout for your neighbor that they're getting the money back, they're getting the relationship back, they're getting their heart back. Come on, somebody. Would you praise God? for somebody else come on y'all ain't shouting good you ain't shouting good you ain't shouting good Hallelujah. Hallelujah. my time is up my time is up I want you to lift that hand my time is up a palm tree that has been macheted, that has had branches breaking off of it. It does something underground that I want you to be mindful of. Is that strength becomes transferable. So that the plants the palm tree produces has stiffer branches. I want you to lift up that hand as high as you can. It's in the realms of the spirit today. I'm breaking stuff off of your children. Hallelujah. God, I can't hear nobody. The spirit of rebellion, I'm breaking it off of your children. Y'all ain't shouting right. The spirit of disrespect, I'm taking it off of your children. The spirit of lying, I'm breaking it off of your children. The spirit of sexual promiscuity, I'm breaking it off of your children. You've been doing all of this screaming, all of this yelling, all this nagging, all of this hollering. And their behavior won't change. Their outlook wouldn't change. Their perspective wouldn't change. God said, this is too much for you to do by yourself. The disciples came to Jesus and said, there was a little boy possessed by a devil. And they said, God, how come we couldn't break it? He said, this kind only comes from prayer and fasting. Hallelujah. Those of you that got a prayer life, I need you to go to war with me for just one moment. Because I got to break some generational curses today. I got to break some things off of these children today. I got to break some things that the enemy thought he was going to do. I need you while that hand is lifted. Would you open up your mouth and just begin to go in the travail for our children? Come on, I can't hear anybody. I need you to open up your mouth. Come on, I need you to travail on behalf of our children. I got to break it off of them. They're not going to be confused about their sexual identity. They're not going to slip into addiction of controlled substances. Come on, I can't hear nobody. I'm breaking the addiction off weed off of your children. Breaking the addiction of alcohol off of your children. 
Come on, I can't hear anybody. Open up your mouth. I need you to lift up that hand because I'm getting ready to go into another realm. And I need you to punctuate your worship. I'm getting ready to break the addiction. I know we don't do this in church, but I got to do it today. I'm breaking, hear this, I'm breaking today off of adults who are addicted to pain medication. God, I can't hear nobody in here. They're not even functioning properly. They're not even moving in their right for mind. But God said, I'm breaking it off for you. You ain't going to spend the rest of your life on this prescription. I got to break the pain off of you. But I need you to submit yourself to me. Hallelujah. Deacons, if you'll help me open up that aisle for me real quick. Hallelujah. I want to open up this altar in two realms. Listen to me. Adults in this room, hallelujah, who have found a codependency on pain medication. I need you to meet me at this altar, please. This is your safe space. This is your father's house. This is community. This is family. I need you here. I need those of you who are in this room that are struggling with addiction. I need you at this altar. I don't care if you're 13. I don't care if you're 37. I want to break that off of you on today. Don't worry about how these people are looking at you in church. I'd rather them look at you in church than look at you in a casket. I need you at this altar. Those of you who are in this room, you got to be set free. You got to be broken from an illegal soul tie. This person just keeps coming in and out of your life at will. You think that you're strong enough and then you get a text message. Think you get them out of your system, then you bump into them out of nowhere. I want to break it off of you on the day. I need you to come. New birth, I wish y'all would give God greater glory than this. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask that you'll pull in for just one moment. Pull in for just one moment. Lift up both of those hands. You're at this altar. Those of you who are online, I need you to just put the lifted hand emoji on the screen so that prayer counselors will know where to target their prayers. Hallelujah. How many of you have had God break a cycle of behavior for you? Come on, I can't hear nobody. How many of you have had to have God break off a mindset off of you? Hallelujah. Believing that God is going to be able to do it. I need that hand lifted. Lift that hand as high as you can. New birth, help me punctuate the atmosphere. I want you to open up your mouth. And begin praying for them. So much stuff has happened in their life intended to break them. So much pressure. So many triggers. So much trauma. Layers of compounded pain. But I'm telling you, God is getting ready to renew their strength. You have people who are at this altar who haven't been the same since they lost their son. People at this altar haven't been the same since the marriage collapse. People who are at this altar who got survivor's guilt because of what it is that they have endured. You got people who are at this altar who are still trying to navigate because they thought they would be further along than where it is that they are right now. You got people at this altar, I know y'all ain't gonna believe it, who are simply weary from well-doing. They done dotted all the I's, they done crossed all the T's, but they're still under demonic stronghold. God, in the name of Jesus, I come on behalf of those with lifted hands. I need you to do something in them. I'm reminded of what you did for your servant who cried out to you three times, I got a thorn in my flesh that has come to break me. Can you take the pain away? And I want you to hear what God said. God said, I ain't taking the thorn away. If I leave the thorn in, you're going to know what grace is. 
Now you're going to find out my grace is sufficient. I want you to know that having a life with God does not equate to a pain-free life. It means that you have strength in spite of the pain. And I'm praying that God will put a hedge fence of protection around your life. That God will cover your heart. That God will cover your mind. That God will cover your relationships. And he's going to do it before Pentecost Sunday. And those of you who have the faith enough to believe it, would you do me a favor? Join me. Come on, join me in giving God glory for it. I really wanted y'all to shout better than that. I said, join me. New birth, listen to me. We're one family. We're one community. We're one circle. This is not a clique. It's a community. I need you to overwhelm our brothers, our sisters who are at this altar. They're going back. I need you to overwhelm them with love and support because you don't know what they're going home to. I want you to interrupt them at every step and embrace them. Tell them I'm with you. I love you. I got you. New birth, make some noise as they go back to their seats even now. Come on, y'all ain't shouting good. I said, open up your mouth. There is power in the name of Jesus. Come on, there is. There is power in Come on, everybody! There is power in the name of Jesus. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Everybody, you're standing. I, uh, I hope somebody was blessed by the word of God on today. I hope somebody's senses that God was talking to you, was addressing you where you are. I'm going to open the doors of the church. Listen to me. I want you to know that church is not a massage parlor. It's a chiropractor's office. It's not supposed to make you feel good. It's supposed to break you in the areas that it matters. So you're able to stand up taller and realize that you are a child of the Most High God. I want to open the altar for people, here it is, who need a church that can handle your pain. You need a church, here it is, that is not intimidated by your afflictions. That can manage and navigate what it is that God has for your life. I have no idea where you are. I don't know how you ended up on today. I do know you are not here by accident. There's no way in the world you logged online by happenstance. Pain, hear this, pain is a narcissist. I better say that to you again. Pain is a narcissist because pain demands attention. You go through pain because there's an area of your body that needs to be addressed. It's only through pain that you know the gravity of your sickness, your illness, of what it is that the doctor needs to attend to. The doctor's going to ask you, do you feel anything? How are you going to get better and you lying to your own doctor? No, nah, doc, I'm tipped out. I'm okay. They can't even address it. When I get to the altar, I understand that this is my operating table. That this is where God is going to address the areas of my life that I acknowledge I can't do for myself. But I need him to do it. I want to open the doors of the church uh, after service is over. we got a health clinic. We've got 13 different health agencies that are partnering. And they are in position for your body. But today, this is about your soul. This is about your heart. This is about your mind. If you're saying, uh, Pastor, I'm not sure. I, I need you to be sure. Listen to me. The church is not a museum where you look and see. It's a hospital where you get healed and where you get delivered. So if you're in this place, you're in this room, give God some glory for this brother already coming. You're in this place. Hear me. You're in this place and you're saying, Rhea, I need a church home. I need a place where I can process my pain. I need an environment where it's okay for me to bleed. 
I need a room where I can work out my trauma. I got to be in recovery because there are areas of me that are okay until I try it. Then I got to sit down slow. If that's where you are, that's who you are. I'm telling you, the doors of the church are open. Would you come like it's just me and you in the room? I want you to come and meet me at this altar. I need you to just come. Come on, come on, come on. New birthday, y'all going to celebrate? I don't know how y'all feel about I'm excited to see men get saved. Men are leading the way on today. I'm thankful under God for this sister that's coming. We're still in Women's History Month. Come on. Bless his name. Listen to me very carefully, very carefully, because uh, uh, y'all, y'all have seemed a little bit lethargic this morning. Y'all's energy levels up. You, you looking at me like you just finished preaching, like you... Like, like it, it done took everything out of you. You ain't done nothing. Amen. The hardest thing you did today was turn to your neighbor. That was the hardest thing you did. I did all the heavy lifting. Come on now. I need you to help me open the doors of the church. There are at least 20 other people who need to be at this altar. There are 20 other people who need to be at this altar and they sitting somewhere around where you are. And I need you to get them from where you are to down here to where it is that I am. Every person, would you move from where you are? Would you talk to the people around you? Ask them, are they saved? Ask them, do they have a church home? Ask them, have they given their life over to God? Y'all ain't talking to nobody, but here comes somebody. Come on, open up your mouth real quick. Bless his name. Are y'all going to shout, here come two more? I thought it was two, that's four. Come on, give God glory. I want to bless his name. Hallelujah. Here comes somebody else. I hope you'll shout about it. Make them know that we're excited about their coming. We're glad to have them with us. Listen to me. I'm, I'm, I want to give you a cheat code. I want to give you a cheat code uh, on why you need to come. I'm, I give you a cheat code because uh, I'm waiting on 10 more people to come and you are one of the people who I'm waiting on. Here's the cheat code. I, I want you to have bragging rights. I'm giving you bragging rights. Come on, here come the whole family. Look at this beautiful family. Look at the father leading the family. Y'all ain't shouting good. Come on, come on. Are y'all excited about black families? Come on. Here come a whole nother family. Come on. Listen, I'm going to give you bragging rights. Listen to me. I'm going to give you brag. Here come two more. Here come two more. Hallelujah. All right. I want to give you bragging rights. Here it is. I need you to get saved today. I need you to join the church today. I want you to walk down the aisle today. So you have bragging rights and you'll be able to tell everybody, I wasn't like all them other people that waited till Easter. <laughs> I got to live it on Palm Sunday. Amen. Wherever it is that you are, I, I just need four more of you to come. When the four more of you come, I, I'll be where it is that I want to be this morning. Here comes one. I only need three more to come. Come on, y'all ain't shouting good. Hallelujah. Are y'all going to shout for this brother? He going to do major things for the body. Come on. I'm waiting on two more to come. Y'all done forgot the rules. When you see somebody coming, y'all supposed to shout. Come on, give God glory. I only need one more to come. When that last one comes, I need y'all to tear the club up. Come on, open up your mouth like you believe one more is in the room. 
Come on, come on. Y'all ought to shout for this brother. Shout for these sisters coming. You make my heart happy, glad. Bless his name. Shut your right hand to faith. Shut your right hand to faith. If you out there and you need to get saved, you out there and you need to join the church, would you please come? I'm, I'm James Brown. I'm not too proud to beg. I, I, I need you to come real quick, please. Your life is on the line. Your soul is at stake. You've been coping and managing and suppressing pain by yourself for far too long. I'm telling you, if you start turning it over to Jesus, hallelujah, I'm, I'm a living witness. He'll start working it out. Amen. Stretch your right hand to faith towards our brothers, towards our sister. That They came as friends, but they leaving as our family. They rolling with us. Amen. G-Unit. Amen. Stretch your right hand to faith. Repeat after me. You're in the right place at the right time joining the right church serving only God and I know that's right if you're not right say show you're right come on let's give God some praise for all of our brothers all of our sisters thank you ask that you'll follow us this way if you'll follow us this way new birth make some noise for our new family y'all ain't shouting good I said give God glory you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I got to show you something uh, real quick. Amazing thing happened on Palm Sunday. An amazing thing happened on Palm Sunday that I don't want you to miss, uh, that I don't want you to ignore. And that is when Jesus rode into Jerusalem, the people of God didn't just start screaming, uh, praise the Lord, but they said, we are in the presence of greatness. And because we're in the presence of greatness, we got to give something to them. They knew that they could not come into the presence of the Most High God empty-handed. And so they started reaching for branches. They started reaching for branches and said, we've got to give something. But not only that, the Bible says something significant. They started taking their coats off. They took their coats off. Here it is. And threw it on the street for a donkey to ride on it. Hallelujah. That donkey is riding on it, tearing up their jackets, tearing up their shawls defecating on. They can't even put it back on. Here it is because it's been given to the use of our God. Everybody on that day understood that worship requires sacrifice. Hallelujah. Your shouting means nothing if you are not sowing. What must I render unto God for all these blessings? God made everything. Everything belongs to him. Ladies and gentlemen, that palm tree gave of, the, of itself the most of anybody. And I'm looking for those of you, here it is. You know it's a sacrifice when it hurts you to give it. I better say that slower. It is not a sacrifice until it hurts you to give it. If you're giving and it does not impact your life, there is no sacrifice. What did you have to give up in order for that to happen? In order for you to move, in order for you to flourish, in order for you to go. What was your sacrifice? story was uh, told uh, this week about Nelson Mandela while he was uh, incarcerated s serving uh, on Robbins Island uh, is that uh, his son died, his eldest son, while he was incarcerated. And according to his tribal custom, here it is, if the father is not there to bury the son, then the spirit just roams aimless. Nelson Mandela went to the warden of the prison and said, will you release me for one day just to go bury my son? And the warden of the prison said, we will release you only if you renounce apartheid. We'll release you today and you ain't even got to come back if you'll stop fighting for apartheid. Nelson Mandela made a critical decision. I am not going to bury my own son in order to free an entire nation. Ladies and gentlemen, what kind of sacrifice are you prepared to make for the kingdom that is not laced in self-aggrandizement? When I give, knowing that it is not going to benefit me, but it benefits the community at large, benefits the kingdom of God. It benefits, here it is, the people on my row that are unaware. Envelopes have been dispatched to everybody, and I want 100% 
participation. It only works if we all do it. Only works when we all do it. I, we found out uh, last week through uh, our CFO that only 82% of the people who come to church actually give. There's another 12% that just sits and watches. And said, this is a sanctified Netflix. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just seeing what is happening, but I'm watching illegal cable. I'm on somebody else's dime. I'm using somebody else's password. I want every person in this room, I want every person who's online, before it is that you jump off, I need every person sowing and I need every person giving. Our sacrifice is 10%. That's what they did with their cloaks. But their offering was the branches. It would have been enough just to throw their cloaks down, but they said, I want to go over and above. I want to go beyond in order for God to know that I'm not just paying him lip service, but I'm giving him a sacrifice. Our servant leaders, they've moved amongst you and they have uh, released to you envelopes. If you're absent of one, would you lift up that hand, please? Amen. The tree gave everything it had and you giving God $5. And they're going to spend $40 on brunch. In the words of my mama, you got food at home. <laughs> I want you to make that sacrifice on today. I want you to sow today. I want you to serve on today. Every person who's online, I want you to be a part of what it is that God's doing. Can you imagine your giving is praise? Your giving is worship. And I want, don't want to know how loud you shout. I want to know how deep you sow. And I want you to sow. On this morning, uh, whether you're giving through Givelify, Push, Pay, or Text to Give, all of our giving app, uh, applications are on the lower thirds. Would you lift up that hand right where it is that you are? Lift up that hand right where it is that you are. I did part one of this message today on how difficult it is to break some stuff off. Holy Spirit uh, put something in my spirit last Wednesday. I called uh, one of the favorite sons of this church, uh, Bishop George Bloomer. And uh, I said, I want you to come on next Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, and break spiritual strongholds before we go to Resurrection Sunday. I'm telling you, something supernatural is going to happen in this place on Tuesday night. Hallelujah. And I want you to be a part of it. I want you to be connected to it. Come on, lift it up as high as you can. Repeat after me, Lord, thank you for what you did last year, for what you did last month, for what you did last week, for what you did yesterday. But the seed in my hand is an expectation of what you're going to do before Pentecost Sunday. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless the Lord. Our servant leaders, they're moving amongst you. Our deacons are going to help facilitate. If you want to uh, sow on your own accord uh, and release it on the altar, uh, you are open and available uh, to be able to do that. Uh, while it is that you're sowing, while it is that you're sharing, while it is that you're giving, would you give your attention to the screen for just one moment, please? You may say, why run a race just to come in second place? New birth. Whatever we're in, we always come first. And this sign is the last of what we used to be. A couple of months ago, a driver lost control, ran into this sign, and the LED wall became on the blitz. God gave me a vision, show me a sign. I wanna replace all of the signs that are on our campus so that they are exemplary of the spirit of excellence that our church represents and exudes. I can't do it without your help, without your partnership, or without your buy-in. It's time to enhance the beauty of the signs around the exterior of our campus for the first time in over two decades, reflecting our inner transformation. We invite you to join us in sowing seeds that beautify our church grounds, and in return, seek God's direction in your life for the upcoming quarter. With giving tiers from $100 to $5,000, we ask that you pray for guidance on your contribution level. Let's unite on April 21st to raise $250 
$50,000, honoring the land entrusted to us by the Lord. Together as we give, we anticipate the signs and wonders God will reveal in our midst. Bless the Lord. Come on, let's give God some glory for every gift and for every giver. Were you blessed today by the word of God that came from our pastor? Come on, some things are hard to cut off, but God is able, amen? Amen. We have some wonderful things happening here at New Birth today in honor of celebrating our health. We believe that God is able to keep us, amen? He's not only a healer, but he's a keeper. And today we have a health fair after service. It's right in the lobby. So when you leave, walk slowly through the lobby. There are about 20 stations for you to stop by. We have our very own New Birth Medical Clinic that's right here on our campus. And they'll be out there for you to ask all the questions you've been wanting to ask to find out how you can have your health seen about right here at New Birth. And we want to make sure that you are healthy in every way. We have a station called Ask the Doctor. Those questions you've been wanting to ask. You know, what about this lump on my arm? Or, or when I roll over this way, I get a little twitch in my toe. You can ask the doctor today after service. Our very own new birth doctors will be available for you to ask questions, whether you are virtual or in person. So make sure you stop by there. Uh, we have testing for you today for your blood pressure, your glucose levels, for your cholesterol levels, and also for HIV and AIDS. If you uh, decide today, you know what, I think I need to go ahead and have that HIV screening done. We have a way that you can get that done in a very private and personal way. You're outside, you're going to find a mobile wellness unit that's available for all of those screenings. So no one knows what screening you're going inside of there for. It's all right. And we also have some home testing kits for HIV. So perhaps you'd like to do your own testing at home in private. Uh, you're able to do that as well. Uh, we have COVID vaccinations today. Anything you need, it's right here on campus. Everything you need is in the house. Amen. Amen. How many of you have children that are eight years older or younger? Eight years old or younger? Let me see your hands. Oh, yes. Well, we have something for you as well. DeKalb County has come and they brought free car seats and booster seats because your children need to be safe. Make sure you stop in the lobby. If you have some questions around breast cancer, there's some people out there as well. And how many of you could use just a few more dollars in your pocket? Just a few, just like 125 or so. Uh, there is a group here today that is conducting an African-American heart study. And if you qualify to be a part of the clinical trial, they will give you $125. So that's on you. If you wanna do it, go on out there and check it out. Uh, we have so many health insurance companies that are here. If you are uninsured or underinsured, make sure that you get that taken care of today with any of our providers that are out here to answer your questions. So will you stop by the health fair after service today? Awesome, awesome. Well, ladies, let me hear you make some noise. Sisters, we have something special for you tomorrow night. Circle with the Sisters is back tomorrow night at 7.30 p.m. Right here in the sanctuary. Let's come meet here in the sanctuary with Pastor Carrie Turner. And she has for us tomorrow night a special private screening of a documentary film that has been produced by our very own New Birth member, Brandy Harvey and Jacqueline Glass. It's called Sisters Getting Well. Sisters, we need to come tomorrow night so that we can learn more about how to get well. If you're like me, you need your battery recharged every now and then, and you need a checkup. So let's come tomorrow night, get that checkup, that tune-up, and make sure that all of our sisters as well, don't come by yourself, tell your auntie and them to come too, all right? And then finally, as we move into Resurrection Weekend next weekend, we have some 
wonderful things that we're going to experience together as a family. Good Friday service on Friday night. It's going to be absolutely amazing. And Sunday morning, Easter Sunday morning, we're going to come together and celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ together. But in between, we want to serve our community. We want to be that church that is a light on a hill and we want to help somebody. Is that all right? How do you feel about helping other people? Well, you know, we are new birth and you know how we do it. We make sure that everybody has what they need. If God gives it to us, we're going to give it away. And so God has blessed us to be able on next Saturday to provide Easter dinner on us, new birth for 2,000 families. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, Easter dinner's on us. It's on us. It's on us. Come on, you're a member of New Birth. You pay tithes and offerings. Easter dinner is on us. And we want our community to come. It's going to be in a drive through fashion. And all you have to do is pull up one family dinner per car. And when they pop their trunk, we're going to pop in groceries. We're popping in produce. We're popping in chicken. We're popping in everything they need to make that table beautiful so that they don't have to have an empty table on Resurrection Sunday. We need to have hands that will help us to put those groceries in the trunk. We have about 155 people that have already registered to volunteer, but we need you. You will make the difference. If you've never served at the King's Table, this is the perfect time. If you've served at the King's Table before, this is the perfect time. If you're out of town and you're coming in for the Easter weekend, this is the perfect time to serve with your church. Please go to the website, newbirth.org, and you will find more information about how to sign up to volunteer so that we can serve our community. We are New Birth, and we love God, and we love his people. Let's receive our senior pastor again at this time. Give Pastor Stokes a big hand. Thank you, Pastor. She's doing an amazing, remarkable job. I'm grateful. Uh, yield to me, if you will, uh, just a point of personal privilege. Thank you so much uh, for how you honored me last Sunday for my uh, fifth anniversary. I am so grateful, so privileged for uh, all of the cards uh, that you all signed. I stayed up all night uh, reading those, so thank you so very much. This coming up Friday, uh, Dr. Creflo Dollar and World Changes Ministry is coming to New Birth. Come on, I need us to be in the building. I need us to be uh, in the building. I'm appreciative of uh, so many of you uh, who are with us on today. Uh, before I became a pastor, I was a national uh, youth and college director at the NAACP. That's really uh, where I was developed in leadership and organizing and community uh, service. And so I am so elated that the Georgia state president of the NAACP, Attorney Griggs, won't you please stand, uh, as well as uh, their executive board is here. Come on, give them a big hand. Thank you all so much. They were on their uh, leadership uh, retreat and uh, woke up this morning and decided to come to New Birth. And so I'm honored uh, to have you all uh, with us. Uh, when I first came to uh, Atlanta five years ago, I wanted to very, I want to say in the first five days of me uh, getting here, uh, I met uh, this amazing young woman. She has since gone on uh, to become a uh, state representative, Representative Tanya Miller. Won't you please stand? I'm honored to have you with me uh, on today. Grateful for you as well as uh, Representative Syra Draper. Would you please stand? Thank you so very much. Honored to have both of you. Amen. I, th I think I met you eating chicken or something. Yes. Yes, eating chicken wings. Amen. Good to see you. Uh, on Panola Road. Thank you so very much. Uh, glad to have you. Uh, from Colorado, uh, there's a college tour from Denver, Colorado. Are y'all here? Huh? Oh, Lord. Okay. The college tour is all them young people that got saved a minute ago. Uh, so they... Isn't that amazing? Amen. We are, we're so grateful. They came all the way to Atlanta to find Jesus. They, they was looking for the AUC and found JC. Amen. 
Uh, I am uh, so appreciative. I need you to do me a favor, please. I want you to be intentional uh, to invite people to come and be a part of our worship service on Resurrection Sunday. I'm biased. I'm biased. I, this is just what I feel. I, ain't no greater service than church at New Birth. That's just my opinion. Amen. And so I want you to corral all of your friends, all of your family uh, to be a part of where it is that you are. If you received the palms when you came in, would you lift them up, please? Lift them up. Amen. Now steady yourself and stand up. Amen. You may have to put it down to stand up. Whatever is your combination. <laughs> I want you to do that. Pastor Stokes has worked tirelessly to bring this health fair together. Those of you who are online, we're doing our own version of Meet the Doctors. Uh, and so we are not going off. We're just transferring to our doctors. They're going to be able to answer all of the questions for you and for your family. Those of you who are in this sanctuary, I need you to go by at least one of those health stations, uh, one of those screenings. Our people die from a lack of knowledge. Amen. Uh, they die from a lack of knowledge. 80% of black people only go to the doctor when they're going to the emergency room. Uh, and so I need you to please get checked. I need you to get screened. I need you to be uh, protected. Look at the person beside you and tell them, we care about you. We care. We care about you. Uh, would you lift up that hand right where it is that you are? Lift up that hand with that palm in it. Amen. Lift it up high. On behalf of the janitors of new birth, please take that palm with you. Amen. <laughs> Do not leave that palm uh, on the ground. Lift up that hand uh, right where it is that you are. Uh, repeat after me. Walk with God. And he'll walk with me. Talk with God. And he'll talk with me. Listen to God. And he'll listen to me. I don't care you brought your daddy. I'm still taking you. my girl don't she look good today you okay if he bothering you blink at me twice hey no this is her uncle who's standing in the gap oh, man i don't fell in love y'all know how many people online be asking me about this little girl she done became a star overnight how many weeks i've been holding her a month and it just dawned on me friday i don't know this baby's name Taylor. Taylor what? Cameron. Taylor Cameron. Yes, because they're all you online who've been asking. This is Taylor Cameron. And how old is she? One. One. Okay, she is one years old. I'm so glad to see you. She is unimpressed by everything. I'm going <laughs> to let your uncle take because you act different when he around. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Lift that hand as high as you can. Now unto him who's absolutely able to do anything but fail. May God rest. May God rule. May God abide with each and every one of you henceforth now and forevermore. And all the blessed people of God said, amen. Come see the doctor outside. Your pastor loves you. I'll see you Monday night for all of the women. Tuesday night. Make sure that you're here for group therapy. Receive your invitations. Hold on, hold on. Everybody stop right where you are. 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 Y'all right ain't been saved that long. Nobody move, nobody get hurt. Stay right where you are. On your way out, I want you to take invitations that I want you to give to your friends and to your neighbors and your colleagues, invitations for our resurrection weekend. We are making you our street committee for new birth. Uh, so I need you to take two or three of these so that you get three. Thank you. Sir. The usher told me three. Get three of these, and I want you to be intentional to invite three people to church on Sunday. God bless you. <laughs>